Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now in today's episode, we're going to be traveling back to the year 2000 and taking a look at Apple Works 6 for Windows. Now yes, this is a real thing, I actually just learned about it a couple of weeks ago, and to explain how it came into existence, we have to go over some history. So Apple Works was originally an office suite for the Apple II. It was first released in 1984, the same year that the Macintosh came out. And it included tools like a spreadsheet program and a word processor, even a database program. These are things that you would expect an office suite to have. A couple years later, after the Apple II GS came out, that was in 1986, Apple Works GS was created. It began its life as GS Works at a company called Styleware in the late 80s. Styleware was then bought out by another company named Claris, who renamed the program to AppleWorks GS. How were they able to call it AppleWorks, you may ask? Because Claris was actually owned by Apple. It was a subsidiary created to develop productivity software for the Macintosh. Apple actually transferred the rights to Mac Paint and MacWrite over to Claris, who was tasked with maintaining them. But both of these office suites are only related to the Apple Works that we're talking about today by name. That's because this Apple Works is a completely different product. It began its life as Claris Works back in the early 90s. Claris Works began its life at another independent company that was actually formed by some of the developers who created GS Works after they decided to leave Claris. Claris then bought this program from them, named it Claris Works, and released it in the early 90s. The neat thing was, even though Claris was under Apple's control, they still created a Windows version of Claris Works. Eventually, Apple decided to take over development of Claris Works after Steve Jobs returned to the company, renaming it to Apple Works, and believe it or not, the Windows version wasn't killed off. Apple still made a Windows version of this program, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. I should note that this is just a bite-sized version of the full history of Claris, which I honestly could do an entire episode on, so be sure to let me know if you want to see that. But anyways, let's jump into AppleWorks 6 for Windows and see what it's all about. So AppleWorks 6.0, which I've got on this CD right here, was originally released for Windows in 2002. Let's go ahead and uh, pop the disk into the drive here. We've got obviously Windows XP on this machine here, which came out one year before AppleWorks 6, so I thought it was very fitting for this episode. Now, to install AppleWorks on Windows, you need to install QuickTime. It is a prerequisite, so we've got QuickTime, you need version 4.12 at a minimum, so we've got that right here. Now, this installer will actually require an internet connection to function properly, but luckily uh, we have this .qdat file right here, which contains all of the information that it normally has to download from Apple's servers, which are not, uh, I mean, they don't host this version of QuickTime anymore. Uh, for those wondering, I downloaded AppleWorks 6 for Windows from Macintosh Garden. It's a great resource for all sorts of old Apple and Macintosh software. And uh, on that page, they have not only the AppleWorks uh, file, but also QuickTime 4.12, which uh, you'll have to install first, as I said. So let's go ahead and go through it here. It's a very simple install. And you can see right here, it says approximate download size. That's what I was talking about. It normally has to download everything, but uh, luckily we can just uh, skip past that. So we're gonna choose internet slash LAN. This doesn't really matter because once again, it will search for installed components. It will find that QDAT file and uh, it will, you can hear it reading off the disk right now, and it's gonna copy those files for us. So Apple used this uh, installer Vise from Mind Vision Software uh, installer program for their Windows programs at this time. So the AppleWorks installer uses the same program, you know, to install. So uh, let's go ahead and view the sample movie. Why not? We can check out QuickTime for a little bit here. So here it is, the standard, oh, just wanna play there, enhanced viewing, save internet video. Uh, it's going to ask us to upgrade to QuickTime 4 Pro, which we obviously cannot do anymore. So uh, here it is, guys. Here is what QuickTime for Windows looked like back 
in 2002. Pretty cool. It does look like a macOS application, and Apple followed their macOS design language for a few of the programs they released on Windows. If you guys saw my Safari on Windows retrospective, which you can check out here, you'll know that uh, for the first few versions of Safari that came out on Windows, Apple had actually used the same design language. So you can see that they that this portion of the program looks like, I mean, this is a standard Luna theme window here. This is just the file menu or the menu bar, but the actual uh, window, you know, the, the QuickTime player itself uh, looks very, very Mac OS like. So once again, this is version uh, four, actually it doesn't say the version number here, that's interesting. Uh, but this is version 4.12 or 4. Point, I think it's 4.12 or 4.0, oh, 4.1.2. So yeah, it's still, this is the this is the version that you need to uh, install AppleWorks. So we'll close out of that. With that installed, we're going to uh, run the AppleWorks 6.2 setup file. Uh, just to show you, if we go to properties here, this is not digitally signed by Apple or anything. But uh, this is the, the size of the installer is 15.5 megabytes. And uh, I mean, this was created, this, uh, this version, you know, it was uploaded to the Macintosh Garden, I think sometime in 2011. So that's why we have the uh, file creation date set as that. So we're gonna go ahead and run it. And as I said, you'll see essentially the exact same installer, though it will obviously say AppleWorks instead of QuickTime. So here it is, you've got that AppleWorks uh, branding there and the old font Apple used back uh, during this time, which is pretty neat. You've got the license agreements, Apple Computer Incorporated was obviously their name at this time. So we're gonna definitely read through this and uh, click on yes. I'm sure we've all read through these before. And we're gonna install into the default directory. And we're gonna go with a custom installation just to show you guys what programs that we have here. So AppleWorks itself, unlike something like Microsoft Office, uh, all of the AppleWorks programs are contained within one program. So if you wanted to only install like the word processor, for example, unfortunately you cannot do that here. But we're gonna get not only the application, but also the uh, the AppleWorks clip art, the templates, and if we scroll down here, we're going to get the, uh, the help. I mean, we're gonna get everything, but these are all the components that you could choose if you wanted to. So we're gonna get the AppleWorks palette files. And if we go down even more, we're gonna get uh, writing tools and file translators as well. So let's go ahead and uh, click on next. And you can see we've got that same uh, installer branding down there at the bottom. So the installer is finished up here and we get two checkboxes, view late breaking news file now and create a desktop icon. We're gonna have those both checked and click on close. So we'll see what the late breaking news was. Well, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> we've ran into a bit of a problem here. The uh, setup program is not responding. So we can have fun with the task manager window here that I opened up if we want to and just draw all across the screen. I'm sure we've all done this before, particularly with Internet Explorer. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to just end the task here. I mean, the program installed, but I guess it was having trouble opening up uh, that, that news, whatever it was trying to open here. So we'll see if just ending the task works or if we'll have to end the process. Looks like that worked. So we're not going to send the error report because it's not going to go anywhere. So yeah, it looks like it didn't complete that last action or those last two actions because one of them was creating a desktop icon and you can see it has not done that. So we can go into the start menu here. And we should have, yep, AppleWorks 6 right here. And uh, so let's see what the late breaking news is. I'm not sure if this just is like a web-based thing. Uh, oh no, this is a local uh, file right here. So what was the late breaking news? AppleWorks, uh, it apparently requires the English language version of Windows 95 or later. It's not supported on other language versions of Windows. It needs a uh, monitor that can display high color. We obviously have that. So yeah, this could run on Windows 95, which is pretty great. So uh, this is a, you know, this is a few pages here. We're on page two right now. Uh, software issues, if your screen area is set to 800 by 600, the bottom of the tools window may be cut off. To avoid this problem, set your screen area to a larger size. And you see right here, Clarisworks for kids is a trademark of Apple Computer Incorporated. So apparently there was a kid's version of Clarisworks and uh, it was still being sold under that name at the time. So uh, yeah, we are going to close out of this and I can show you guys the main application. So we'll go into AppleWorks 6 and just launch AppleWorks. So when you launch it, as I said, everything is contained in this one program. So this is where you would choose if you wanna create a uh, Word document or a word processing document. 
uh, a spreadsheet database drawing painting or presentation so word processing is going to be like microsoft word a spreadsheet like excel presentation like powerpoint then you've got database which will be like microsoft access and on top of that you've got a drawing and a painting program so let's check out the painting program here so we'll open up MS Paint to compare. You've got some more tools over here, some more options, you know, this whole toolbar up here at the top. So if I want to maybe draw some lines here, and let's say I want to draw a square, let's make it a filled square with, uh, let's see here, let's go with a uh, blue color here. And there we go. So here's my awesome abstract art here. We can draw some lines too. So check this out, guys. So we'll draw an awesome shape there. And uh, let's finish it all off with a spray paint or a spray can tool and let us, uh, gosh, what do I want to do here? You want to do some green? Let's do some green and just spray M. <laughs> that does not look like an M at all. M, J, D. You can barely even see that. I, <laughs> that's so bad. I am using this trackball mouse here because... Uh, it's apparently the only USB pointing device that I have currently. I thought for sure I had another uh, mouse, and apparently pressing Control Z does not... Oh, that's really annoying. So you can only undo one action with Control Z. That's that's pretty annoying. So let's try to... Uh, can we just use, like, is there a paintbrush tool? I would think so. Magic wand, paintbrush. So let's just say if I wanted to... Yeah, here we go. This is going to be a little bit better. You'll be able to see this. M, J, gosh, this is pretty bad. I've not, <laughs> okay, let's undo that. And yeah, see, again, I can only undo one action. So I'm trying to like go out here to make, oh gosh, that looks pretty bad. There we go, guys. We're going to save that as, we're going to save it to the desktop because this deserves to be right on the front of uh, our desktop. And we're going to call this. Now you can see we, we do have some Apple-ish things going on. You can see that the file name was untitled by default in all lowercase. That's typically how it would work on Mac OS. And there's only one, I mean, there's an AppleWorks file type. Uh, and you can see we've got like AppleWorks 5.0, Claris works for, uh, Claris works for kids, AppleWorks template. Uh, and then you've got, uh, I mean, you could save this as just a standard, you know, image, a QuickTime. You can see you got a QT for QuickTime there. You could save this as a image if you wanted to. But if we were to save this, like let's save this as a paint. If we close out of here, let's say I want to create a Word document. Uh, yes. So all of the Apple works uh, file types. So like if I say, you know, hello world and we save this all of the Apple works documents, regardless of like if you make a word document, a painting, a spreadsheet, they all use the same file extension. So if I were to go to folder options here, see this is word.cwk and paint.cwk. But obviously there's a lot more to Apple works than just the uh, the word processing and the painting. There's also a presentation tool. So unlike something like PowerPoint, uh, it actually opens up essentially the same paint interface over here but then you've got these controls uh, th this little window here which essentially lets you make slides but uh, there's not really like any text boxes by default like there's no template uh, that that loads by default here but I can certainly add text if I wanted to by using the text tool up here and I can say you know hello world if I can spell properly this is my awesome Apple works presentation and we can control a maybe we want to make it bold underlined we can go to text here and yes yeah, size so let's say we want to make this like the largest possible size and then i can use the the move tool here to move this around and then let's say i want to make it a little bit smaller because the text is a little bit large so we'll make this let's say 36 point and let's uh, make a new line here. Now this did install a ton of fonts. You can see that we've got some fonts in here that Windows does not normally have. Uh, those are courtesy of Apple Works. And this down here is your uh, transition selector. So you can choose what you want uh, this slide. To. So let's say for the very beginning, uh, I would like to use the cross transition. So now if I play the slide here, you'll see it'll do that little cross transition and going to the next one, we'll do that. Uh, whatever that one was called, that was called uh, zigzag. So that's what it will do. Now, obviously there's not really anything on this next slide, but we can add some things. And just like in the paint tool, like I can uh, say, I want to make a giant uh, blue box. I can do that. It's like a you know rounded rectangle with maybe a 
uh, circle inside of it that is, uh, I don't know, light blue maybe, do a little lighter blue. And let's say I wanna change the transition to barn door. So now if I were to play, uh, and go to the next slide, that's, uh, that's what it will look like. So let's take a look at, uh, we took a look at presentation, painting, there's also drawing. You've got some, uh, some different tools up here. And you also probably noticed these buttons up here. These are the various different components within Apple Works. So let's say that I was in the uh, graphing program and I was drawing some lines and then I wanna go over to a Word document. So I can click on this to create a new Word document and it will open it up in a separate window, not a separate program window, but if I click on this minimize button right here. So say you wanted to be using the word processing program and then also working on a spreadsheet. Uh, I can open up a spreadsheet right here. I can start typing, you know, I mean, obviously you wanna do some numbers here. So let's say one, two, three, four, five. There's my awesome spreadsheet. So we can have this over here. Now you can open up as many one of these as you want. So like if I wanted to open up another Word document, another Word document, another, you, you can just keep doing that uh, continuously. But if you have like a bunch of documents open up, obviously things can get kind of confusing. Now you can minimize these and they will minimize not to the taskbar, but to the bottom of the program, which is exactly how Windows itself will behave if you have a program open without uh, Explorer opened up. Uh, it will just minimize on your desktop to uh, a you know window that looks like this, and you can restore it by doing that. Now, uh, if I had like a bunch of documents opened and I had a bunch of unsaved changes, so let's open up another spreadsheet here, and I were to close Apple Works itself, it will ask me for every single document that I've got opened if I wanna save changes. So for this one right here, untitled 4.cwk, which is a spreadsheet, I'll say no. Then it will ask me for the Word document. Say, yeah, I wanna save that. So we'll save it as untitled 2.cwk, sure. And uh, it's gonna do the same thing for untitled three and untitled, which is this is the original graph that I had opened up. There are a couple of other things too. Uh, we were just looking at the basic, and this is called starting points, this little window that opens up when you first start Apple Works. You've also got assistance, and this basically allows you to make specialized documents and it kind of walks you through. Uh, so let's say if I wanted to make an envelope here, this will bring up a assistant or kind of like a wizard here. It will ask you to fill out the information. So this is the uh, address E. So let's say I wanna send this to uh, Apple, and that's going to be one Apple Park Way, if I can spell that right, Cupertino, California 95014. Let's say I don't want to do a return address, so I just click next there. Now you can see that, like, if I go back here, you got this little progress indicator right here. So this is, I believe, the last page, at least I would guess. So this will ask you things like the font that you want. So let's say we want to really make this like a super awesome looking envelope, and we'll use winged. <laughs> Actually, we're not going to do that because it's not going to be able to be read. Uh, let's go with, uh, gosh, I mean, there's so many options in here. Uh, let's go with party let size let's maybe make the size a little bit larger 18 and uh, plain text we'll hit create and uh there we go we might want to change that actually because uh it's not really the most readable font, at least on the computer screen here. So let's go with Comic Sans, guys. What better way to, what what better font to use for an envelope? Yeah, and it just, you know, formats that for you, allows you to print it uh, very, very easily. We've also got templates. Uh, if you were wondering if it came with a set of templates for various things, yes, it does. So let's say I wanted to make a number one dad certificate. This certifies that Paul Johnson is a number one dad presented on July 21st, 2000 by Tommy Johnson. So yeah, pretty, pretty sweet. So number one dad, this makes it, uh, this makes it official right here. So Tom, uh, Paul Johnson, whoever that is, uh, very, very pleased to, uh, to have this certificate for you here. So uh, let's make a hip presentation. So uh, yes, you do have, like if you wanted to make a blank presentation, like we did originally, you could do that, but it would be easier to go with one of these templates here. And this will have more of a formal presentation style with a title slide, and then these slides, you know, with more details about whatever it is there. And if you were wondering, this web uh, tab right here, it attempts to connect to uh, a server. We are on the uh, network, as you can probably tell down. Actually, it's not going to show in the taskbar, but I've got this thing plugged into my network switch over here. And uh, so it attempts to connect to awpicts.apple.com and it just says unable to display the requested item because uh, this 
uh, Surfer probably does not exist anymore. Apple does not support this program. They killed off support for it uh, many, many years ago. So we're not going to get to test out this feature of the program. But this would contain, you know, things that Apple would publish, extra templates, uh, newsletters, things like that for you to go and uh, download directly from them. And last but not least, recent items is obviously going to show you recent items. So you've got, uh, you know, all of these documents, even the uh, the first document that we opened up, which was the uh, late breaking news about Apple Works. But yeah, there you have it, guys. That is a look at Apple Works version 6.2 for Windows. Like I said, I had never known about this. I did not know Apple had a version of this for Windows until it was pointed out to me by uh, a couple of commenters, I believe. And then I also looked into it myself. And I was like, yeah, this is a real thing. It's pretty awesome that Apple did this and actually had this uh, on on Windows at this time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of Time Travel. If you did, definitely be sure to give this one a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And uh, as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.